everybody, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Who Gives a Dram. We are here today, Tuesday, May 16th, 2023, and I have a very special episode uh, for all of you guys today. Uh, we have a guest via Zoom, and we don't do too many Zoom guests anymore. I prefer to be in person if possible, but I had uh, my good pal call in from the great state of Ohio, the land of Weller 107. Um, and the reason I invited this individual to um, come on my podcast is because I'm very interested in a lot of different wa- things that he has to say uh, and a lot of different um, paths that he has taken to get to where he is, one of the biggest whiskey podcasts one and one of the biggest uh, whiskey content creators out there. Uh, of course, I'm talking about my good pal Chris from the Whiskey Noobs podcast, someone that I've followed since really the early days of Who Gives a Dram, uh, two and a half years ago at this point, and I've followed his journey um, as a solo whiskey podcaster just like myself. I don't know too many others that do this podcast solo, this podcast in the whiskey sphere solo, um, but he's made a phenomenal name for himself with over 100,000 followers on Instagram, as well as close to 100,000 followers on TikTok. And we talk um, his journey within the whiskey content creation space, um, content creation in general, starting a podcast, how to be successful starting a podcast, and of course, some some really funny whiskey stories as well, um, including uh, your top three um, or top five whiskey uh, whiskeys that you'd bring on a on a desert island, um, and so on and so forth. So, if you're looking to start a whiskey podcast, if you're interested in the behind the scenes of whiskey cre- uh, content creation or anything of that nature, then I think this is an episode for you. We have a very fun, lighthearted conversation. He's a uh, he's 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 a lot like me, a younger kid um, that's super into whiskey and is trying to. Uh, relay his message to the masses just like I am so uh, I found a lot of similarities between himself and myself and I was super excited to have him on the show so uh, without further ado here's my conversation with Chris from the Whiskey Noobs podcast so what's going on buddy not a whole lot man long day excited to have a glass of whiskey I know you said you won't be and my condolences for that but uh, <laughs> I'm excited to, to have a pour that's for sure yeah, have a pour for me, man. I I am um I'm a little sicky poo right now, and I uh I don't think Nyquil and whiskey will be a, a smart decision to mix. And I, I might don't end up condone talking that. To myself. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't condone that either. So I, I'm being smart. I'm being an adult. Um, and I'm just drinking for those watching on YouTube my sleepy time tea, and uh. Hopefully, I don't fall asleep. Have you, do you? Are you a big tea drinker? This is totally off topic, but are you a big tea guy? I wouldn't say a big tea guy. I do like tea, and I try to get into it more. Uh, but usually, I end up just drinking coffee. Um, for a while there, I was on like a spurt of like green tea to try to like. I, I, I don't know. They say it's healthier. I haven't really looked into it, but. <laughs> Uh, I, I tried and I like green tea, but I can't get into some of like the real bold, like herbal type stuff. You know, I, I like like the flavored tea with some honey in it or something. Usually. Yeah, I'm a big coffee guy, too, man. I drink a bunch of coffee every morning, but sometimes at night, a cup of tea to calm you down right before bed. You know, a little chamomile tea, a little sleepy time tea. It does. It, it helps. And yeah. On your podcast, you talk a lot about, uh, or at least in the episodes that I've recently listened to, I've been listening to you for a while, but um, you talk a lot about um, whiskey being a kind of a meditative experience Mm -hmm. and how you kind of not zone out, but you're focused solely on what's in front of you. And I feel like tea, to me, to kind of connect the two, does the same thing. If I drink tea at night, I'm just focused on that and like at the same time falling asleep because it's chamomile and it's nice. (laughs) I would recommend it. I would recommend trying it out. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think that's an experience you can have with almost anything on your palate. That's either challenging or strange that makes you like focus. Like obviously not like a breath mint isn't going to probably be that experience, but 
anything that's going to challenge you a little bit. Um, but I haven't, I don't think I've had chamomile tea if at all, since I was a kid. So I'm going to have to try it again and see how it relaxes me. Cause I do sometimes, I mean, you podcast on nights as well. So you understand mm -hmm. what it's like when the brain, the gears are turning and you need to be yeah. going to sleep. <laughs> yeah, I, I understand, man. But Hey man, I want to say thank you for joining the show. Um, of course I have been following your, your path really since I can remember. Um, I feel like you and I kind of started our, our journeys, at least online around the same time. And all I know is when I started, who gives a dram, the Whis whiskey noobs podcast was up there with one of the first, I don't know, 50 people that I followed. Um, and ever since, man, I, I, I thoroughly enjoy your content. I love when you come up on my page, um, which is a lot now, and we'll get into that. Um, but uh, I do want to say at the top of the episode that um, I, I'm a big fan of what you're doing. I think that you are very talented at what you do, and I have a lot of questions that I want to ask because I think you – capitalize on the niche that we are in much better than 99% of the people that are also in our space. And that's not a dig at anybody. That's just, you know, um, what I see and how you were able to build your brand and build the whiskey noobs podcast. Um, and I know you're probably like, Oh, I, I'm, I'm sure you're like me and you hate compliments. So I won't, I won't, I won't butter you up anymore, but I am curious, um, to know what got you in to whiskey. I, I know you have an episode about this, but what got you into whiskey and what more importantly, what made you want to start an entire podcast about whiskey? Yeah, no, I mean, I, first of all, I appreciate the compliment and I appreciate you having me on. Um, we definitely, I mean, I know for sure we followed each other pretty early on. I think we even DM'd like very early on for both of us. And we were like, Hey, we got similar content, you know? And I think that's important because I think it's important for us to support each other, which we'll, we'll probably get into here, but how I got started uh, really was, so I got into whiskey. Let's start there because yeah. It's not what everybody thinks it is. Um, I think you probably get this as well. When you're somebody who likes whiskey, people like to assume that you're just like this. You, either you are or are trying to be this big, tough guy who loves whiskey and you always have. And you've been faking it since day one. Uh, but that's often, as we both know, not the case. And that wasn't the case for me. Um, I originally didn't really like whiskey. I grew up uh, with a father who did. And, uh, you know, let me try it. And I was like, this is terrible. This is disgusting. I don't like this at all. And uh, as I got older and, you know, went through the normal kind of college drinking phase, a lot of people do, and um, got bored with it, I started to think, well, I, this is making me feel bloated. This is, it's drinking for a purpose that I'm starting to think isn't the right purpose, you know, just getting sloshed. I'm starting to think maybe that's not why we should be drinking. And, um, I originally got into cigars and cigars oh. are great when it's warm outside. And when you live in Ohio, they're pretty terrible for about six months of the year. Cause you're freezing. <laughs> so mm. I wanted something that I could do indoors. Naturally, I tried to get into whiskey and I didn't like it at first. I couldn't get through a full glass of neat whiskey in the beginning. Uh, and that is where I started. And because of that, and because I had to do the brute force method, which was keep trying it until I figured it out because I'm stubborn as an ox. And I was like, I know there's something here. I'm going to keep trying until I understand why people like it. Um, because I had to go through that method. I really wanted to come up with a way to show people how to go through it better and how to not have to go through that method. And I know there's a lot of people who have some videos. I mean, I, when I was first getting into it, I found some, you know, 10 minute video and it was more so like, here's how to look cool drinking whiskey, or 
here's all the cool terms that have to do with whiskey, which I enjoy, but mm-hmm. it wasn't, hey, I know that drinking whiskey sucks in the beginning if you're mm-hmm. trying to get into it. And if you're not used to strong spirits, here's how to help that if you want mm-hmm. to understand what people like about it. And so that really is what led me to whiskey noobs. And at the time, I I think there are others who do it. Um, but at the time, I wasn't aware of any of them. And I wasn't aware of anybody doing it the way I wanted to. And so I mm-hmm. thought, well, I had a little bit of prior experience with how to podcast a little bit. And I thought, eh, I can try this, you know, let's take a stab at it. And then I just did, I guess. <laughs> That's how it always works, man. You kind of just do. I was the same way. I had a little bit of experience podcasting. I thought, you know, there's definitely a, 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 a niche inside of a niche here of younger whiskey drinkers that might want to, you know, uh, that might want to hear from someone that's not an old head that's not wearing right. a pea coat and a and you know uh a monocle and saying this is I, I smell one of one of the tasting notes that I, that always gets me mad and it's from a very early podcast of mine is um somebody somebody um noted Colonel E H Taylor's small batch as warm baked multi warm baked multi grain bread and I think about that probably literally once a week. Yeah. <laughs> about like that's I as someone who enjoys whiskey, I can appreciate the the minutia of finding that note, but 90% of people that are searching Colonel E.H. Taylor and seeing that review are not gonna even come close to getting that. And that, that's when I thought like there's a there's an avenue here to expose whiskey in layman's terms, which is where I think you and I are very, very similar. And I've tried to do that since day one. Um, but you take it a step further in your show, uh, the whiskey noobs podcast. Um, and you really lay out, like you've had episodes about how to drink whiskey, or these are the different types of glasses. You get into a lot more detail about whiskey than I do. Is that something that you wanted to do since day one? Like you, you wanted to go in that into that much detail about whiskey or did it kind of just feel like the right path to go down? Yeah. So kind of, kind of both. Um, in the beginning, I knew I wanted to get into detail. I knew I am very technically oriented and I knew there were other people, especially the people who tend to cling to hobbies the way that I do that want some of that detail And so I thought, well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to lay out the podcast. I'm going to do a review episode, and then I'm going to do an episode learning something. And then I'm going to do a review episode, and then I'm going to do an episode learning something. And in those review episodes, we'll still try to to learn something. We'll still try to incorporate some kind of a cool trick. And to an extent, that's a little short-sighted because you're going to run out of glasses to talk about and different types of whiskey to talk about. But... What I didn't account for is as I got into it and started kind of picking up steam, uh, people asking me all kinds of questions. And I'm like, oh, this is great. Now I have all these people who genuinely want to know this stuff and I can use those questions for more content and I can uh, cater it towards what I know people are trying to understand. And so I've tried to walk that line and we were joking beforehand about, you know, how original episodes can sometimes be like your first few can be a little rough sometimes. And sometimes it was me talking into the abyss. Um, but I really, especially I around that. my hundred, I do that a lot, brother. I do that. <laughs> I still do that every episode, no matter what podcast I'm on. So it's so easy to do, especially episodes where it's just us, you know, just the host. It's, mm-hmm. it's easy to talk into the abyss. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and, um, so I did that uh, for a while, and I, especially around my 100th episode, which was just a few episodes ago, um, I realized I had found my groove. I mean, I, I had found it long before my 100th episode, but by my 100th, I was like, this seems like a good time to kind of define that groove a little bit. Right. And so that is where where I'm headed and where I have brought it these past couple dozen episodes is – I really want to walk that line between informative and and exciting. I don't want to, I don't want to just be talking into the abyss. I'm sure I've I've probably spent more time talking about, you know, the legs that you see when you swirl it in front. I had a whole episode on that, and um, I want to keep it interesting and still provide that. And okay. I like what you said about not being some guy in you know a jacket or a, what'd you say with a monocle, because yeah. that was 
one of the first things that I said in a, a few of my first episodes was I think those people have a lot of information to give and they know so much, but they don't remember what it's like to be new. And in right. my first episode, that's what I said. And I've always claimed I'm not the guru. I'm not the guy who knows everything about whiskey, but I am new enough that I remember what it's like to be new. And so that's where I've really tried to target my content and then still keep it exciting enough for the people who have been around for a while. I mean, obviously at this point, I, you know, I know what types of wood different whiskeys are aged in and things like that, but I still want it to be interesting to me as well, since I'm making the content. And going into another similarity between you and I, and I, I see a lot of like, I see a lot of those, not just we're two younger guys in, in whiskey, but also podcasts and also creating content and all that stuff. But I don't know off the top of my head. I don't know anybody else that does it alone. Yeah. I don't know anyone else that does it alone besides the two of us. And it, that is a different beast when you sit yes. down and I have my ring lights and I have my camera set in front of me, I, you know, cause I, I put them on YouTube and to be, mildly entertaining for even 10 minutes by yourself the first time is hard never mind your episodes are right around i mean they can be shorter i think you have a few like 25 minute episodes but you have you have plenty of solo episodes that are 45 to an hour most of mine i try to target 45 to 55 minutes if not a little over an hour did you always want to do it alone or is that just kind of how it how it uh how it played out that was how it played out um, to an extent. I mean, I knew I knew how hard it was going to be. I wanted to do it right, and I wanted to do it very regularly. I wanted to miss as few episodes as possible, and I know how hard that is with other people. And um, it started off as kind of a – kind of a, a thing of convenience you know I know I can get my episodes done on time I know that I can make the content the way that I want it I know that I get to come up with the ideas which can also be a little bit of a hindrance because you run out of ideas sometimes but right uh that was how it started and then um kind of like you said it's a very specific niche I, I don't know anyone other than us that does it especially with a podcast that is about something so social drinking whiskey. It's something that's typically so social. Mm -hmm. um, and I eventually caught on to the fact that it can be a benefit as well, because you're, you're the people who listen are really getting an idea of you. And they really right. get that interaction. And it's not just the podcast brand. At a certain point, I changed my Instagram from whiskey noobs to Chris from whiskey noobs. I mean, the at is still yeah. at whiskey underscore noobs. But I thought, I don't want to just be a brand. I want to be a person that people think they can talk to and they feel like they can come to me and they feel like they can ask me questions. And yep. so uh, I found that with the solo podcaster thing, that is really a uh, benefit of it, given the fact that, as you mentioned, it's not easy all the time. I'm sure uh, as I have, <clears throat> as I have, I'm sure you've cut out your, your fair amount of ums and ahs during <laughs> episodes because sometimes that happens way, way too much. I, so a few things there. I did the same thing. I changed my ads always been at who gives a dram, but I changed it to Connor Gilbert, my name, because I felt the same way. I don't want to be who gives a dram. I want to be Connor from who gives a dram. I, the exact mm -hmm. same thought process that you had. I wanted to be, cause I have people a lot of the time that reach out that, you know, want to talk about a plethora of the topics that I discuss, mostly whiskey, but sometimes I talk to people about like me and uh Bourbon Lens, uh the Bourbon Lens podcast, which is awesome. We talk MMA all the time. He's a big UFC guy. I'm a big I talk about a lot on the podcast. We go back and forth DMs about UFC and I have people hit me up about UFC events and stuff like that. I don't want to be a brand. I want to be me. Um conversely with my other podcast, Bourbon with Friends, that is a that is a brand. That is something that I view more as an entity that is comprised of myself and Paul, my co-host, and all of the people that are involved with it. But it's always about the brand, kind of like Barstool. Like Barstool is, is the brand, and there's a bunch of entertaining personalities below it. But at the end of the day, it's, it's Barstool. What we do right. is for bourbon with friends. Um, 
And also, I personally, like, do you edit a lot? Because I, I, I'm not, and we talked about this before the show, I'm not technically savvy enough to like, I record my video on my phone and it looks fine. I'm perfectly happy with it. I don't want to spend thousands of dollars on a camera yet, but I record it from my phone and I, it's easiest for me in my brain to just go one whole video on the phone, one whole audio clip and not, and not have to clip them and edit them and take out those ums. So that's an added stress on me because I'm just, I don't want to learn how to, how to do that. I am like internally saying, all right, this is two seconds of dead space. This is three seconds of dead space. This is four. We have to do something now. And just like throwing something out there as to, keep the listener or the, or the viewer engaged with the whiskey news podcast. Cause it is very uniform and tight and it's very good. It is one Thank of you. my, my more favorite uh, whiskey podcasts for sure. Um, do you, do you do a lot of edits? It doesn't seem like you, you do a whole, I don't, I can't tell if there are a lot of cuts if you do them. Yeah. I mean, so I've really tried to get better about that as time has gone on. And I would say I probably spend, a quarter or a fifth amount of the time editing as I did in the beginning. Um, mm-hmm. But when it started, it was every dead space, every, not every, uh, but every, uh, mm-hmm. that I could cut out because without people noticing, I got really good at, you know, stitching the audio together and whatnot. Um, but I also don't do video. So it right. made it a lot easier because I could just kind of stitch the audio and I could, yeah. I got pretty good at kind of using my, all the different tools they give you in audacity to, blend it in such a way people wouldn't really notice. Uh, Mm. As I've progressed, I've tried to get much better at just recording off the cuff, allowing myself time to think and not having to cut out so much. And I really don't do much cutting out at all anymore, uh, except, except for if I take like a really long drink, if I'm doing a review episode, sometimes I'll just sit back and drink it for like 30 seconds to a minute. I don't think anybody wants to listen to me do that, Mm. (laughs) but Sometimes I'll do that, but I've tried to get better, especially as I hopefully make the move towards video, uh, which I don't have at the moment, and I don't have a, a set date when that's going to become possible, but I'm trying to to move that direction a little bit. Uh, so I, I wouldn't say I edit too heavily anymore, but in the beginning, <laughs> yeah. for sure, I was yeah. editing heavy. Yeah. yeah, we all do. We all do. I started yeah. video. I think um, early on, I wanted to incorporate video just as another medium. You know, it's Mm -hmm. like sometimes the YouTube doesn't perform well. Sometimes it performs great. And it's just like another medium to to have someone potentially engage with with your content isn't going to hurt. For Um, sure. And I think that's a great segue into talking about how you've kind of transformed your content because – I remember, and I don't remember how long, I feel like it was just a few months ago, but it was probably, man, well over six months ago. I remember looking, you know, I've always loved, I've always loved the reels you've done. And I wish I, I wish I did the same. I wish like what you do on Instagram and on TikTok is awesome. It's like, again, when I, like I said, when I see you come up on my page, I'm watching the entire thing. It's you and, uh, my buddy Ryan, that one dude Ryan. Oh, you yeah, guys sure. are kind of like when I think of whiskey content creators, and again, I'm not blowing smoke up your ass, <laughs> but when I think of whiskey content creators on Instagram or on YouTube, I think of you guys. Um uh okay, people, sorry for I had some technical difficulties. My Zoom um my Zoom profile wasn't subscribed, so I had to I had to spend eight dollars. <laughs> live and resubscribe to zoom so um but we're back it took only took like five minutes but it was like two seconds for you guys because i'm going to edit this out um chris man i don't remember what we were talking about do you remember what we were talking about uh for sure we're talking about that one dude ryan um Ah, and reels i think yes yes i was i was saying i'm not gonna blow smoke up your ass but you and ryan (laughs) are my like when I think of whiskey content creators on Instagram and TikTok, I think of both of you guys. And because you guys are two things, you produce great content and you are consistent, which I think is more, 
not more important in producing quality content, but it's very, it's like 51 to 49%. Um, and I have so many questions about, about this aspect of your, of your brand, but when, when did you notice an uptick in engagement on those platforms? And do you have any idea what made that happen that maybe you were doing something different that you weren't doing before or did it kind of just like the consistency paid off? Uh, it was definitely a little bit of both. So <clears throat> I started off, uh, the plan, the plan was not to do what I'm doing now. Uh, the plan was, Hey, TikTok is this, this new up and coming app because of the pandemic. Um, and maybe I could use it to get some people to listen to my podcast. Yep. And I ended up having a couple videos do pretty well. And then it really, it spiraled into this thing where I was like, maybe I can really like, this is the marketing platform to be on right now. And then when Instagram came out with reels, personally, nowadays, I like Instagram's algorithm a little bit better, but I was like, well, I can use these to market. And so that is what I did. And it became a medium where I'm like, well, now I can actually use these to bring different content to different people. Some people don't want a long form podcast. Um, they just want, they want in 30 seconds, how can I drink whiskey better? How can I enjoy it more? And so I thought, well, that's, that's what I'm going to do. And there was definitely a couple significant upticks in the engagement. I, I don't know specifically what it was. I can say for certain, uh, consistency was a big part of it. There was a little while there where I was really killing myself with like three videos a day on each platform. Um, just trying to make the algorithms like me. And uh, then there was a couple of videos that did really well, and they were more put together, more original. Uh, they weren't just me using, which I don't have anything against this. I actually love like crappy humor, but they weren't just me grabbing the, the latest funny sound and putting together a three second video. It was actual put together content. Here's how to make an old fashioned. Here are my three favorite bourbons, those sort of things. Um, and so then I started leaning more into those because I thought it was providing a little bit more value and I cut back on how often I was posting and instead made sure I was posting some more quality stuff. Not a lot of just, just throwing spaghetti against the wall and seeing how many pieces stick. So That's that what is I do. really, <laughs> what's that? That's what I do for the most part. Uh, I like, you know, I like grabbing the, the sound or the memes. Like I remember seeing the John Cena meme where like he starts dancing and I'm like, yeah. I gotta make, I gotta make something to that. I don't even care if it's not whiskey created, uh, related, because that thing will kill it. And, um, but uh, no, I, the, I love that too, because like I yeah. still do that, and uh, I even in my bio, I don't know if it's still in there or not, have good whiskey and bad jokes because I love, I actually miss that type of TikTok as a consumer, not as a producer, but as a consumer. I, that was like my favorite era of TikTok was it was just all sounds like you just scroll and it was whatever was trending. Yeah. Uh, so, the, yeah, I, <laughs> I still, uh, I like to get that John Cena one's hilarious and the uh, Beetlejuice, you know, Beetlejuice. Yeah, I did. I did both of them, man. I did. Uh, did you? I did. Um, man, I did a, I did a John Cena one. I did the Beetlejuice one and I did the Shannon Sharp one. And yes. I think they were all three were whiskey related. Um, if they're not whiskey related, they're either movie related or UFC related. So those are like my, my three niches. Yeah. Um, you know, for, for lack of a better term, um, with, with your online presence though, and your, and your content, especially on those social platforms, do you see, or do you plan you know, transitioning more into that side. And I don't want to say derailing the Whiskey News podcast at all, but focusing your attention more on that side of things where maybe you're doing like um, an Instagram show or a, a tick, you know, TikTok lives more, or something along those lines. Or is the Whiskey Noobs podcast kind of the the old reliable that that's here to stay and wherever the social content goes is it's just gravy. 
there was a time where I considered that a hundred percent. This is a little bit of uh, up until now, non-public information, but there, mm. there was a time where I considered that. And I thought, um, you know, Instagram and TikTok are doing so well. The, the podcast is a, a huge time sink. I mean, it takes a lot of time to produce. <clears throat> Maybe I just go with Instagram and TikTok instead. And it, it bounced around in my head for a while. And uh, it was one of those things. I think the turning point was I really was talking to my wife about it. And she was like, so you're going to just quit making the podcast. All the people who ask you Q&As, all the people who are constantly DMing you saying, you know, all the, the difference you've made in their journey and things like that. And I was like, you got me there. I, I can't just not, you know, talk with those people and provide what they want. And that was a good while ago. But after that point, I realized, I thought, man, I really got close to flying too close to the sun here. I got really caught up in my TikToks and my Instagram reels. And um, now I'm on YouTube shorts as well. I really, this was before I was on YouTube though, but I, I really got caught up in that. And I was like, man, I almost gave up the reason that I started this. Mm -hmm. And so that was a little bit of a wake up call. And from that point on, I was like, I want to do the opposite. I want, I think the podcast is the most beneficial content that I can provide to people. I want to use these platforms to show them that. And so then I really changed my strategy to kind of that method where the podcast is now the old reliable and <clears throat> the Instagram, the YouTube, the TikTok are more of here's what I am able to do. Here's what I can provide for you. I think you'd prefer to go listen to this long form stuff. That's kind of the, the method I'm using now. And it's podcasting was super hot during the pandemic, the mm -hmm. 2020, early 2021. It was the place to be. And um, I don't think I, that really influenced me in starting mine. Um, I'm sure I had some influence on yours as well in terms of you're not doing anything like taking advantage of the moment and some, some, maybe some extra free time. Um, yep. but it is easy, I think, to get caught up in the instant satisfaction of a TikTok going viral or a Instagram reel getting a hundred thousand views or a million views or whatever, and feeling that instant satisfaction when in reality, if you look at the conversion rates from a, let's say a um, viral TikTok to how many people follow you based on that from from that viral TikTok, versus podcast down downloads and the people that are consuming your long form content, it's it's night and day as to the commitment from both those audiences. You will be able to keep that. Long, that podcast audience, that long form content, that your core audience, more engaged through an hour than someone scrolling through TikTok seeing your video. Oh, that's a funny, that's a funny uh, whiskey clipper. Oh, that's that's a that's a that's makes sense. I never knew that. You know, you can make an old fashioned like that, and then they maybe throw it a like and go on to the next one and forget you even exist. So, I I think that a lot of People try to make that happen, but especially with a podcast, the what's the word I'm looking for? The, I guess the engagement you get from a podcast and the people that actually listen is is unlike anything that you can that you can that you can create because yep. it's such it's long form. <clears throat> people are going to listen to this entire podcast. And they're going to be followers of mine or followers of yours. And they're already going to be fans and new people will listen to this podcast and be exposed to you or be exposed to me and then want to go consume our more of our long form content rather mm -hmm. than finding on TikTok or, or Instagram reels. Instagram reels is a little different because in the Instagram profile, again, with the algorithm, it's Instagram is a bit more concrete than TikTok, I feel. Mm hmm. For sure. Uh, whereas, again, TikTok is literally they they do a great job. You're scrolling and it's a new video every single time. And uh, I guess my point is podcasts. A podcast. I'd rather have me personally. I'd rather have a hundred solid podcast listeners than ten thousand Instagram or TikTok followers that are 
they're not doing that's all they are that that makes sense absolutely i mean that is really you're right on point with that um and you mentioned like the conversion you know if you have a hundred thousand views how many fought what percentage of those follow you well take it a step further what percentage of the people who follow you have any love for you and any love for your content or they just it was a, a thoughtless follow which i do i'm not saying there's anything wrong with that no but what i'm saying no. is you've got with your podcast you've got a group of people who really genuinely care about what you're trying to say and usually it's a higher percentage you know if you get if you get 100 people on your podcast just for percentage wise it makes it easy maybe taking a guess 50 percent of those people really genuinely care um mm -hmm. if you have 100 followers on instagram maybe five of them actually genuinely yeah. care yep and it's my it's my podcast followers and my patrons who really they are commenting in a way that they genuinely care and more importantly as con as comments grow more and more negative because anytime a video does well you get trolls. negative yeah yeah they're the ones in the comments like you're missing the point or you know this is what he meant by that and I've gotten to the point where thankfully, thanks to those people, I a lot of times just don't even respond to the negative comments because I know that either those people will or if they don't, then that negative person doesn't get their satisfaction. And yeah. that I think loyalty might be the word that you're looking for there. That loyalty from yeah. the podcast listeners is unmatched and it's so much more rewarding of a relationship than the relationship. And don't get me wrong. I love all of my followers and I appreciate them, but uh, yeah. it, I, I think a lot of them probably don't even remember that they follow me. I'm sure that happens a lot more often than podcast subscribers. Correct. And how many of those Instagram followers or podcast listeners are going to be a patron, uh, a patron rather than uh, an, a TikTok follower or like a, an Instagram follower, like mm -hmm. that conversion is there. Like let's say half the time, maybe a, a consistent podcast listener su subscribes to your Patreon, mm -hmm. maybe 5% of the time, an Instagram follower. Now you have a hundred thousand followers. So that 5% is still a large <laughs> numbers, but it's, it's just about the, the percentages of each and, and comparing them. I always, I have people ask me a lot if it's like worth it to start a podcast. And I always say, if you're passionate and you're going to be consistent, then yes. If yeah. either of those two things are not true, if you're just starting it to try to make money or if you are going to do it once a month, don't do it. You're going to waste your time. You're going to waste your money buying the equipment. Don't yeah. even bother. Make an Instagram. Yeah, when I first started, um, I had a, a, somebody that I followed who was to the point where he was making money from his podcast. And I said, if you had, if you gave me one bit of advice, what would it be? And his advice was, you're not going to make any money for a very long time. Mm. And I think that is such an important, I think that's a question that you need to ask yourself if you want to start a podcast is if I don't make a dime from this for one year, two years, five years, will I still be glad that I did it? And right. you, if that's not a yes, I don't, I, I don't think it's going to be worth your time because odds are you're not. And odds are if, if money is your motivation for it, then you're going to end up not having that consistency. Yeah. There's, uh, you know, there's ways to leverage it. Like you're doing with your Patreon. Mm -hmm. um, I've done it most frequently through merch sales. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been thankful to, to sell a, a good amount of merch that, is no way can you even kind of live off of it's it's not enough <laughs> money at all to do that but it's enough to maybe one month pay a bill mm -hmm. you know like, like or, or invest in another microphone and not have to take it out of your of your bank account or something like that um but yeah with it's... yeah go ahead sorry no it's okay i just that's the other thing is you could, you, you could blow up in, in six months and be making a living, but I think the motivation behind it, if you don't go into it without that expectation, then the motivation is, is not where it needs to be for you to end up being consistent. And then what amount of money is 
worth it? And then what amount of a following is worth it? I think everybody who starts a podcast would love to quit their day job and do it full time. I'm not saying that that's not the case, yeah. but um, no, I totally agree with you. Yeah. It's uh, it's, it's not what our generation thinks it is where you just blow up and you're immediately, you know, uh, two bears, one cave, or you're immediately Joe Rogan yeah. or something like right. that. Yeah. That's a, I side note. I yeah. prefer Tom Segura's other podcast with his wife more than Two Bears One Cave. Oh, is I'm that right? Big, I'm not a big Burt Kreischer fan. Really? No, I'm I, never. Okay, have been. so I I listen to a lot of comedians, so that this is uh, that's a good topic. I have a theory, and I don't mean any malice by this, but I I think Burt is not, in my opinion, for me, not the greatest stand up out there. But as a podcaster, I really enjoy him because I think. It, He's really good at storytelling, not not so much on stage, but in podcast form. But I also do like your mom's house. That's a great podcast. That's well. what it's called. And I someone that I've been following and I've been a fan of and I've consumed his content since day one is uh, Chris D'Elia. And oh, yeah. Since he started his podcast back in 2017 and he did a podcast called the 10 Minute Podcast it was himself, uh, Brian Callen, and Will Sasso. And that's really like kind of where I get my comedy from. Like my comedy, that comedy style is my comedy style. So I draw from that a lot. But I always saw Chris D'Elia's podcasts were so much better than a stand-up. And then I saw him live like two years ago or three years ago, maybe 2019. And I was like, oh, wait a second. No, he's he's pretty good at stand-up too. And um, But I feel the same way. I'm not a, not a big fan of Burt Kreischer's stand-up. I think he is pretty good on podcasts, like that viral clip of him uh, sipping the Kool Aid. The Kool Aid. <laughs> like that yep. makes me that makes me laugh just thinking about it and the way that he laughs. Yes. And when he pours, when he pours from the Yeti into the cup, and you can see the red, and he goes, "Oh wow, that is Kool Aid." Yes. Yeah, they have that. a great dynamic. <laughs> uh, fun fact about Chris D'Elia, though. He uh, came to my university. This would have been 2016, my first year at the University of Akron. And he came. This is so he wasn't very big by then. Uh, and he didn't do a single minute of his act. He just talked to the crowd the whole time. It was all crowd work and it was all hilarious. It was awesome. Yeah. If you haven't checked out his podcast, he has a few now, but congratulations by Chris Delia. Uh, that's my one of my go tos, um, and of course, I mean Joe Rogan. You know, depending on the guest, um, yeah. But of course, the Monday Morning Podcast by Bill Burr is a oh. is a staple in my comedian podcast selection. If you're not, I'm not sure if you're a Bill Burr fan, but I am a huge Bill Burr fan, and <laughs> that he releases his podcast twice a week, and it's kind of just like this. He kind of just yaps on about whatever's on his mind, and it's my favorite content that comes out every single week. So, I will have to listen to that for sure. I love Bill Burr. I've never listened to his podcast. I love his stand up though, so I have to his listen stand-up. to it. Yeah, his stand up's great. But um, I have a few more questions for you, Chris. Before I before I sure. um before we leave here, um, one kind of standard question that I'm sure you get all the time, but I'm curious because I don't know. If you had to pick your three whis- Desert Island whiskeys, and I said whiskeys, it doesn't have to be a bourbon. If it wants, okay. if you want it to be a blended scotch, if you want it to be a single malt, if you want it to be a a Japanese whiskey or American single malt, the American whatever, it could be whatever. Okay. It doesn't have to be bourbon. But th- your three Desert Island whiskeys, what are you picking? Oh, this. This question is so tough. I get so many of the favorites, top five, top threes, and I'm I'm oh, so indecisive. Yeah. I'm I'm so bad at it, but I'll try. I'll try. Okay, so there's gonna have to be a bourbon. There's gonna have to be either a Scotch or an Irish whiskey, and there's probably gonna have to be something just else, something different. Mm. Um, I'm looking at my shelf now. I'm thinking the something else is probably going to be barrel seagrass okay that, i think that'd go well on a beach honestly it would i mean assuming that this deserted island is is in fact tropical 
then yeah, I, <laughs> I would so. agree. Let's let's for the sake of argument, it's a tropical island. It's kind of like Castaway. Okay, okay, that's yeah. the island. Yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna have barrel seagrass for sure. Uh, uh, I would. The scotch, I don't know if it needs to be painted or not. That's what I can't decide. I feel like it almost does, because how else? Then you're never going to get peated scotch again. You're never going to get anything with peat in it again. So maybe, maybe Ardbeg. I like I liked Ardbeg 10 year better than Lafroy personally. So, so maybe I. I'd, what's that? Oh, sorry. I'm not close no, to my mic. Fine. I said, so do I. I. 100% prefer Ardbeg over Lafroy. And I had the absolute pleasure of going to each back in October with, wow. you know, recording Bourbon with Friends um, yeah. and got to do podcasts on location at both locations. And I nearly passed out when I saw the big <laughs> Ardbeg on the, on the white warehouse brick painted in black facing the ocean. I was just like, wow, I am, I am in heaven. I remember seeing that dude. Super jealous moment. That is yeah. awesome, by the way. That is great. You're gonna have to. You have to give me some of the secrets as to how you hook that up. That's sweet. <laughs> I will. I'll. I'll connect you. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah. So I, I'm thinking Ardbeg ten year because this is a tropical island. But I like to think uh, there will still be some somewhat chilly nights, and that is like my like campfire fall like go to. Okay. So I'm gonna have to have Ardbeg ten year. Which bourbon I'm going to pick has got to be the hardest question that I could even answer. Um, yeah, there's I could pick like five off the top of my head in two seconds. It's so hard to pick one. Same. I could pick a ton of them. Maybe for the sake of argument, let's say I, and this is going to be an unpopular opinion for some people, I love well or full proof now i know some buffalo tray stuff it's overrated whatever well or full proof specifically the full proof i love so i might pick that mm, i, can I see don't it think from here. i've ever had a well or full proof ever it's really good i'll have to send you a sample of it it is out of the whole weller lineup aside from william larue weller because i have never had the pleasure of trying that out of mm. the standard weller lineup it's my favorite yeah. by far yeah, I um was lucky enough to uh I guess it's gifted to me now. He said I could have it with a Weller single barrel. Oh, and yeah. um it's great, but it's not a hundred dollars great. And I said the same <laughs> thing when I reviewed it. Like this is a great even a hundred dollar whiskey, sure. Mm -hmm. Eighty or eight hundred? No. I yeah, like I did a whole whiskeys. episode on full proof. I said the exact same thing. I was like, Yeah, this isn't this isn't the eight hundred dollar bottle, but I did I think I said maybe a hundred dollars i think is where i landed with the price i said you know this is this is an 80 dollar buy for me all day maybe mm -hmm. like a hundred dollars but the prices get ridiculous on I, secondary we could have an entire episode about that buddy i swear there's i have so many opinions about that but one more question before i, I let you leave and this is kind yeah. of what i'm most curious about man is you've done a great job taking your brand and growing it to where it is you've you've done a fantastic job you're one of the biggest whiskey podcasts out there you have one of the biggest accounts and you did you you are like just a good guy you know what i mean like you just have you do a great job and again not blowing smoke but i'm just letting you know that you know as someone who also does the same thing i look at you and i'm like man that is someone that's doing it right um thank you where do you want to where do you see yourself you know, a year from now, five years from now, like, is there an end goal here or is it just, you're just going, you're going with the flow. The end goals never stop getting higher. I can tell you that, <laughs> but, um, I, I have some other, other things in mind that I would love to do. Um, a couple of ideas that I, I can't really talk about yet, but just general, general things I would like to do within the industry. Um, but also as far as my content goes, I want to be a voice for the new guy, the, the old guy who is not a snob and the average guy who thinks that whiskey drinkers are snobs. I mean, mm -hmm. I, this, this, any hobby blowing up is great. Right. But with that, you're always going to get gatekeepers. You're going to get people who are just jerks, people who are snobs, people who they want to know more than you about a topic. And so 
when new people start showing up who know more than them, they get upset about it and they get right. intimidated by it. And I really want to be a voice for the people who are not that way. And I want to show people that we're not that way. I started a new series, you know, whiskey guy expectations versus reality, because I want to show that 99% of the people you meet in the hobby are not the way you think they're going to be. And part of that is I really was taken aback when I started getting the comments about binge drinking and about whiskey, you know, just being something like, Oh, you got all that whiskey. You must be an alcoholic. Oh, if I yeah. had all that whiskey, it'd be gone in the night. And I really, really wanted to try to steer the culture away from that. And I've right. really made that a big part of my podcast and of some of my content, because I think it's very important to separate there. There is a time for some people where, you know, they want to be intoxicated, but I want to separate that from what I use whiskey as, which is I truly look at it as an art form. And I truly mm -hmm. enjoy, like we mentioned in the beginning, that meditative effect, the fact that it's making me be present, the fact that it gives me so many awesome people that I can have great conversations like this with, mm -hmm. that is what I want to focus on. So in terms of my content, that is really where I've steered it is it's kind of, I've narrowed down to three main things, um, drinking whiskey to enjoy it and not for the alcohol, uh, cutting back on snobbery and just being a generally approachable and nice person. Hopefully <laughs> we mm -hmm. try to be, yeah. everybody gets upset sometimes. Yep. Uh, and then also just kind of, and this is really goes in with the snobbery part of it, but doing fun, stupid, goofy stuff on my show. I mean, I had like two or three episodes where we tried different hot wings with whiskey, like just stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, because I don't, I, I don't think that that realm of whiskey has really been explored where we try weird stuff. I did one episode where I reviewed it and then I ate a meal and then I came back just to see how the review would change. Mm -hmm. Um, so weird. I think I, li like I think that, I listened so. to that one. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I listened to that one. Did you? Yeah. And that was, that yeah. was a fun episode. I thought, yeah. Um, so that's really where I'm trying to gear the content towards is as the culture grows and as, you know, it, anytime something grows too much, you get the boatload of trolls with it. I'm really trying to steer the culture towards more of like a, a kindness, less divisive type thing. I think it's something that just in general, we need not to get too deep, but we need something that unites people rather than divides them. Whiskey is, and it's been said, a great uniter. I, mm -hmm. Thankfully, there's a great community uh, within whiskey. I've yet to meet someone that is just a total ass. Mm -hmm. You know, like I've I've yet to meet someone that's been rude or has been um, mean in any respect. And I I think that's because you know whiskey is such a it's such a it brings so many people together in different respects and everybody has a different reason as to why they enjoy whiskey enough to have an Instagram or have a TikTok, And that's important. Um, and I, I commend the whiskey community for that. And that's part of the reason I've stayed and do, I've done what I've done is to talk to people like you and to have these conversations. But um, I, that was fun, man. That was fun. Yeah. That was a fun conversation. Um, Tell the people where uh, where they can find your stuff. Yeah, so you can find me on TikTok at Whiskey Noobs Podcast. You can find me on Instagram at Whiskey underscore Noobs. Um, YouTube, honestly, I don't know the handle because I just added like the handles to YouTube, but it's the Whiskey Noobs Podcast is my channel. Um, and then anywhere that you stream, uh, you can find the Whiskey Noobs Podcast. And uh, it's it's audio only, but it is on YouTube with like the, you know, the uh, sound form, the waveform, basically. Um, so, yeah, you can find me there and check out the reels. Don't be afraid to say hi. I get a lot of highs. And so I apologize if I don't respond, but I try to. And don't be afraid to uh, to communicate and don't think that we're snobs because we're not. <laughs> That's no, my message. Uh, some maybe maybe once in a great while we say something that's snobby when we're trying to taste a whiskey and maybe it does oh, taste yeah. like warm baked multigrain bread. But <laughs> that is yeah. that is that is uh, few and far between. Well, thank you, buddy, for coming on the podcast. This has been great. Um, I've been wanting to talk to you for a while. You have an open invite 
whenever you want to come on and talk whiskey, you are invited to shoot me a message and we'll set it up. Um, and again, I, uh, I think what you're doing is great. I think you're on a great path. I, I think you're, you're killing it right now, but I can see just you 10, 10 Xing it and, and getting up there and, and being a real prominent force in the space, even though you already are. And, um, again, thanks for coming on, dude. I appreciate it. Thank you, man. I appreciate those kind words. That's awesome. Thank you so much for having me on. And always remember everybody listening, whiskey's the water of life. So let's start living.